Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, which is Yevamay's Daf Ayin Aleph. We are holding 10 lines from the top of the Amid. In yesterday's Daf, we discussed the Halacha as follows. A Kayin, who is an RL, has not had a bris mila. He may not partake in Teruma. Why? We have two reasons. According to Rabbi Eliezer, it's based on Exeter Shav. Because we have an extra unnecessary phrase in the parish of Kerben Pesach, Toisha V'Sachir Lo Yechal Boy, which the Gemara proved to be a, an, an extra term, unnecessary phrase, and that is meant to allow a Gzeder Shava, a Gzeder Shava of the highest form, Gzeder Shava Mufne, we have Toisha V'Sachir by Pesach, we have Toisha V'Sachir by Truma, we connect the two, just as an oral may not partake in Kerben Pesach, there's a clear pasuk to that effect, right? An earl may not have korban pesach. Likewise, he may not eat teruma. That was Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Kiva said, "No need for gzera shava." Omar Ma. Let's go back to what Rabbi Kiva says. Rabbi Kiva Omer Eina Itzarech. There's no need for gzera shava. How are you Omer? We have a pasuk by teruma itself, which alludes to an earl not eating teruma ish ish, and continues. To speak about a fellow who is a tummy, why ish, and then ish again, it's a ribay larabis as a to indicate that an oral as well will not have teruma. Ve'imel larabis as a How do you know it's alluding to an oral, perhaps an oinen, a fellow whose close relative passed away on that day? In that oinen status, that period of intense mourning, he may not have teruma. It's alluding to that, not to an oral. Am Rabbi Yisur B'chanina. For that we have another pasuk, a pasuk which undis, does this impression. Am Akra V'cholzar. Says V'cholzar Le'echal Kodesh. It's an extra lashon V'cholzar to tell you, look, Zoros Amarti Lecha. The concern is strictly by a Zor. V'lo Yaninos, but not an Einin. Aim of V'lo Yarelus. Perhaps the pasuk is excluding an Oral from this concern. Only a Zor, only a non kayan should not have Teruma, but an Oral who is a kayan may have Teruma. You can't say that. Why? Huxiv Ish Ish, we have the rebuff and the extra Ish, which includes an Oral. Well, now you have one Pasuk which is including Ish Ish, we have another Pasuk which is excluding Vachol Zor, only a Zor is a concern, but not the other fellow. How do you know which way to go? Why do you choose to include a Arel in the Isra and exclude the Oinein. Umar Rois. Miss Tavra, it is probable to go in that direction. Arelos Havale Lerubuye. An Arel is meant to be included in the Isra of Teruma. You know why? He has many elements which are not featured by the Oinein. Shekane Masim, this is an acronym, a, a simon for. A total of five features found in the oral, not found in the oinin. Masim, krusim, bedavra, avet. We'll see. Mechusar mas. An oral. Needs a masa done to him to remove that status, as opposed to an oinin, who is not dependent upon a mas. An oral is more severe. Umasa begufay. Not only that, the masa done to an oral pertains to him, himself, to his body. V'anush karas. Neglecting Mila brings about karas. All these things are not applicable to an Oine. V'yesh neglifni adibur. The concept of Mila was prevalent even before Matan Torah. Avram Avinu and his descendants did Mila. Umilas zechara v'avad ma'keves. Another element that we find by Mila and not by Oine. Come the Karben Pesach. Look, if his children or avadim are arelim, the owner, the father, cannot have Karben Pesach. These are unique features to Aurel. And therefore we are rest assured that the Pasuk of Ish Ish, which is marbe something, including something, some individual, is including the Aurel as opposed to the Oinin. Adorab, just the opposite. Aninus, have a little buye. Let's include the Aninus. We find some elements by Oinin not found by Aurel. So perhaps an Oinin, he is superior to Aurel. 
Which ones? Shekein Yeshna Bechal Shah. It's an ongoing, loyalenu, recurring condition. As opposed to Arelus, it's just once in a lifetime. Vanehegas Banashim Banashim. Oinen is applicable to men or women equally, as opposed to Arelus. Vinei Badal Sakin Atzmi. And Oinen is not something which can be personally undone. It's not within your abilities to remove that status, as opposed to an Arel which can be removed by doing the Mila. You have a total of three elements found by Oinen, not found by Arel. So why do you prefer Arel? Hanach Nefish, and those are more numerous. It's five elements by Arel, and only three by Oinen. Certainly we prefer the Arel, and we apply the Isra to the Arel with regards to Truma. Rav Amar, Beloi Hanach Nefish, even without the numerical advantage, you cannot propose that the Pasuk of Ish Ish is going to include an Oinen. Amakro Ish Ish. The Drasha is focusing on the words Ish, right? Ezo Dover, Shiyashna Be Ish. Tell me, what deficiency is unique to a man, Ve'ina Be Isha, and not found by a woman? Have you Oimaz Arelis? It's the Arelis concept. Apparently, when the Pasuk is alluding to something, to some deficiency, to, to some individual who should not have Truma, it's the Aro. Okay, so that uh, puts that to rest. Now, one more kasha. Rabbi Eliezer learned the same halacha from Exer Shava. Because Toisha Vesachar, those words by Karben Pesach were unneeded, superfluous, and formed a basis for the Exer Shava. Now, Rabbi Kiva, who has another source for the same halacha, of Rabbi Kiva, Hai Toisha Vesachar, my Ovidle, what does he do with that term? What halacha does he learn from there? Why does the Pasuk say, Toisha Vesachar should not have Karben Pesach? It's an extra phrase as we discussed yesterday. Amr of Shmael Asuya Ravi Mol. Vigivoini Mol. We have two unique situations where I would think perhaps the Aravi, the, the Arab fellow who they would uh, customarily do Mila, and Givoini, some other nation, fellow coming from Givan, if he's Mohol, if he had Bris Mila done to him, perhaps he can have the uh, Karbi Pesach. Therefore, the Pasuk has to say that, no, Toisha Vesach Yechal Boy, don't think that uh, these individuals can have the carbon Pesach, despite the fact that they had a bris Milo. Now, the Rishonim ask a pretty strong kasha, why would I even entertain the thought? Why would I even think that a Goy, an Aravya Givayni, can have the carbon Pesach? Don't we already know that even a Ben Neichar, a Jewish fellow, who has unfortunately strayed from the path. He can't have carbon Pesach. Why would they be any better than him? So the Rishonim say, perhaps, perhaps you would think that a Yisrael who strayed is worse off in a way than a, than a guy who was never part of the fold. So sure, Ben Nechar can't have carbon Pesach, but maybe a non-Jew who had experienced Mila, in this case, he's Mutter. That's why we need a Pasach, Toysheh Vesach Eloyechal Bay, which includes even this type of situation. Says the Gemara. You see, we already know that an Aurel cannot partake in Karm Pesach. It's a Pasach. V'chal Aurel lo'yechal boy, right? These fellows, the Aravi, who had Mila done, he's an untrue. He's still called an Aurel. <laughs> By definition, a non-Jew is called an Aurel. Aurel alludes to something much deeper than just that skin or that membrane. Aurelus is a lotion of closed up stuffed up emotionally spiritually a guy is classified as an earl irrespective of his physical state of whether or not that earl or skin was removed so why would i even have a hava mina to allow this fellow to have the carbon pesach he's an earl irrespective of his physical state vahani mulin ninu do you mean to say these fellows are considered mulin have experienced a bris Vatanan. <laughs> Take a look at the Mishnah in the Dharam. You'll see clearly. A Yisrael is always called a mul, mul. By his very essence, he's open to Hashem. He's, he avails himself to spirituality. It's, it's, it's a different different breed, different entity. A guy is always called an Aral. 
whether you had a bris or not. But now, koy nam shani nen, koy nam is lashon of like a nickname for carbon, lashon of neder. Koy nam shani nen ala reilim. Whatever I have for the oral, I cannot have an offering. So he's committing himself to uh, keep away, not benefit from my reilim. Who is included in this term arelim? Muta ba'arli Yisrael. He can have benefit from a Yisrael who happens to be an oral because a Yisrael by definition, by virtue of his heritage, of his essence, of his neshama, is not called an oral. The skin is just a, a cover-up. He's got to remove that to reveal his true, his true essence, which is open to Hashem. Right? So arelim never refers to a Yisrael, even if he's an oral. V'asr b'muli avdi k'chavim. By contrast, he could not have an offer from a akum, even though he had a bris mila. Conversely, I'll keep away from mulin. Who's that? He could have an offer from a goisha, fellow who had a mila, but not from a yisrael, even if he's an oral. So oral refers to a goy, mol refers to yisrael. So ravi mol, give mol. Who we mentioned a minute ago, those fellows, although their skin, their oral skin has been removed, they're still called Arelim, and an Arel cannot partake in carbon Pesach. You don't need a Pesach for that. El oh, so it's coming to include something else. Ger, a convert. He had Mila without Tvila. So you would think maybe, you know, he's not an Arel anymore, he's on his way in. Chilish HaPesach is, no, he's still not a full fledged Jew. Or the cotton chanel at Kishu Mall. A baby born, born in a Mohol state. I would think perhaps he's okay with the carbon Pesach. No, because Savar, because Rukiba holds, Sorach Lahatif Mimenu Dam Bris. He still have to generate some Dam in the Mokama Bris to complete his meal. So he's, it's an unfinished job. And that's what the Pesach says. These fellows can't have the carbon Pesach. And that's what Toysha Vesacha is coming to include. These two individuals. Now Rabbi Lezer already used this Pesach of Teshuv HaSachah to generate his Gzera Shavah, it's unavailable for this halacha. How's he going to know these halachas? Answers the Gemara, he's not. Because he disagrees fundamentally with these halachas. Rabbi Lezal Tamei, he follows his shita. Da'amar ger shemol v'le toval ger malyu. We had this back uh, in Perak HaChilitz. A ger is on the way in, he had a mila without a tvila. Technically he's a ger. And he can have the carbon Pesach. Because Savar likewise he holds this newborn baby, this lucky boy with a bris, because Savar caught a kishanel mole, like Moshe Rabbeinu, he was no elad mole, and Sarach lahatif, menudam bris, there's no need to do anything more. So, of course, he can have the carbon pesach. He's a mole. He's a mole. Without any inhibitions. Okay, so we cross back and forth. Rabbi Kiva has his drasha. Rabbi Lezer has his drasha. What does Rabbi Kiva do with the extra pasuk? He applies it to those cases. Rabbi Lezer disagrees with the halacha. One more thing. What does Rabbi Lezer do with Rabbi Kiva's ish ish extra pasuk? Rabbi Lezer, hi ish ish my avali. What does he do with it? He doesn't. Dibra teira kolashem and yadam at time he finds that the pasuk will express itself in a way which mirrors the. Uh, the cultural norms. Sometimes people speak like that. Ish, ish, person, people, people, right? So, it isn't coming for a drasha. <coughs> and that lays, the matter, that lays the matter to rest. Here comes another interesting shayla. Boi rav bar ukva. So we know that an oral can't have truma, be it because of this pasuk or that pasuk. What about a cotton oral? He's less than eight days old. Ma'u l'suchoi b'shem and truma. Can an adult take truma oil and smear it on the on the kata, which is sort of a uh, a form of consumption? Rashi brings the Gemara Shabbos. Rashi is about halfway down the Amid. Ma'alu suchay shemen shel truma. Just read it inside the Kaimalon. We know in the Gemara Shabbos we learn the sicha kishtia, smearing anointment is tantamount to consumption to drinking. The nafkalon maybe a tavay kemayim bekirboy uche shemen about smoysav. We see the pasuk again to him compares anointing oil to drinking water. And actually the Toysus in Yuma says it's only not smachta, it's medrabanon, but the concept is alluded to in this Pasuk. It applies to Yom Kippur, 
right? We don't do sicha on Yom Kippur because of this concept. It's sort of tantamount to injecting, to consumption, to shtia. The same with, with respect to truma. Actually, the pasuk elsewhere brings a, a pasuk. The Gemara brings a pasuk, but Tosis in the Yuma says that it's, it's merely an asmachta, it's just a, like a hint, a support to the din the Rabbonon that we equate sicha with shtia. That's why we're not concerned about using non-kosher salt because it's just merely being applied to one's skin externally and minhadin is not considered consumption. Okay, back to Abu Gemara. Whatever, whatever it is, the rice of the Rabban, we don't, um, we don't uh, do sicha. At least when it comes to truma on a fellow who's not meant to, who's not entitled to that truma. So what about a cotton oral? Interesting shy. He's an oral, but he's not yet of age. He's on the range. He's less than eight days old. There's no brismila at this point. Is he an oral or not? So, may we or may we not? What's the crux of the question? Arelus, ahead of time. It's still underage. He's not yet eight days old. There is no mitzvah yet, but there is a, a mitzvah. There is the, the, the existence of the arelus there. The skin is there. Halachically. Do we treat it as an oral or not? Amr Abzer, Tashma, bring your right. The Brisa discusses Karim Pesach, as we mentioned before. One has to look after his children, his avodim, ensure that they had mila to enable himself to allow himself access to the carbon Pesach. And the Pasuk, when presenting the Allah regarding children, Pasuk says, You have a son? You can only make the carbon Pesach if you looked after your children's bris milah. When it comes to Avadim, the Torah uses slightly different language. You have an Evid, look after his Mila, Oz Yechal Boy, that allows you to eat the carbon Pesach. Oh, it would sound from the Pesachim that sons disable father from bringing the carbon Pesach. Avadim disable their master from eating the carbon Pesach, unless they're looked after and have a bris. Only Elamila Zechara Bishasasiyah. From the Pesachim, you only have a a directive regarding children, regarding scharam, pertaining to making the Karm Pesach. The Ramila allows you to bring the Karm Pesach. Vavadav, but the Pesach discussing looking after your slaves and doing their Mila ahead of time alludes to eating the Karm Pesach. Vavadav b'shasa achila. Minayin litin, how do you know to shuffle things around as well? Minayin litin, how do you know that the Arelis of your sons, which prevent you from Bringing the Karm Pesach will apply to Avadim as well. Their Arelis will prevent their master from bringing the Karm Pesach. Likewise, the specifics that are mentioned by the Evet will apply to the sons as well. The Evet prevents his master from eating. Sons will prevent their father from eating. For instance, let's say the um, the son was not chayiv in milah at the point of asiyas korban pesach. His chayiv only surfaces later. How? We'll see in a minute. There are many different possibilities, many different situations how that can come about. But in any case, theoretically, suppose it wasn't a concern bishas asiyah. It only surfaced later, in advance of the. Achil of the carbon pass. How do we know that the sons will disable father from eating the achila, the carbon pass? Likewise, when it comes to avadim, how do we know both things apply to both? That asiyah and achila, both on the same level. In both cases, you have to make sure your sons and avadim looked after. Tamalaymar oz oz lekzeder shava. In both psukim, we have lashon oz. We equate the two. We compare the two. The concern regarding Avadim and Banim apply both to the time of Asiyah and the time of Achila. End quote. That's, that's the price. I'll try to work this out. 
בשלם עבוד ומשכח אסלו. דאיסנו בשעס אכילו, ולסנו בשעס אסיר. So it, it sounds from the, the rice on the Pesukim that you can have, theoretically, you can have an Eved who will present a concern at the point of Achilo. Look, I'm here. You need to take care of me and do my Milo. But he was not yet a concern at the point of Asiya. When you shechted the Karim Pesach, Arab Pesach, midday, he wasn't around. Do you know why? Because you purchased him afterwards. King going to Zavnu, no Beni Beni. He went to the market, Erev Pesach, after Chatzos, after you brought the Karim Pesach. He was not a factor during the Asiya. You did the Asiya prior to purchasing him. Then you purchased him. Here he is. Pesach needs to tell you. Even though he wasn't here during the Asiya, but you can't consume the Karim Pesach without first looking after your Evet. So that's Pasha. Ela Zacharav. The is Nubish As Achila. The less Nu. But when it comes to children, give me a case, please, that a katan would pose a concern, would be a factor, would exist, would be here at the point of Achila, but less than Bishas Asiya, but was not a concern when I brought the carbon Pesach. Right, the Pesach says, look, even in that case, he didn't present a concern during the Asiya, but if he's here, Bishas Achila, look after him. Make sure he's He's prosperous. Give me such a case. How's that possible? You don't buy your kids. How did he come about between the Asiya and the Achil? Oh, only have one possibility. He was born in between. Malotov. After the Karp Pesach was brought, he was born. And the Pesach needs to tell you. Even though he was not a factor at the Asiya, but now he is. Clearly, even an underage infant. He was just born. Brand newborn. Father can't have carbon Pesach. Apparently, Arelus takes effect from moment of birth. So that clarifies our Shiloh. That Arelus should is man, have Arelus. You can't smear truma oil on this baby. Oh, Rav, how can you say that a newborn baby would hold back their parents, would hold back his father from Karim Pesach, with his birth. How can you even suggest that? The Pasuk says, He moi loy kal zachar. Father has to look after his children. Apply a bris. He moi loy kal zachar, amar achmona. The Torah is looking to offer solutions. Solution-oriented Pasuk. Go ahead and take care of the child which enables your Achila. V'oz, you can say, do the meal and then go have your carbon Pesach. But this baby, V'ha'i lav bar me'ilu, he can't have a bris, he's barely two hours old. Of course he's not a factor at play. If you can't have a bris, you can't inhibit your father. There's nothing to talk about. So that can't be the case that the Pasuk is speaking about. Elo, rather, how can we have a situation where there was no Chiv of Mila at the point of Asiya, but only came about later, only surfaced before the Achila? A newborn, that's, the, that's not an option. Elo, Achimayaskinon, also, by the way, if it's not an option, then it doesn't relate to our Shaila. Right? So we no longer have a, a riot to our question. Oh, but Lamai said the Pasuk is difficult to understand. The Bryce is difficult to understand. Give me a case where Mila was a Chiyav only at the point of Achilas HaPesach and not beforehand. Ella, Hachab HaMayaskinah was speaking Kigayin Shechol Tzosei Chamo. Baby was already eight days old, but he had experienced a, a serious a fever condition and Chol Tzosei Chamo, the Chamo, the heat, the fever left him. Okay, so he was unwell, and he got well at this point, right now. So there was no possibility of a bris at the point of Asiya Sakarb, only Bishas de Achila. But that doesn't 
doesn't work. Venesively called Shiva, he still has to wait seven days. The Amar Shmuel, Chotzasei Chamanois in the Kol Shiva. You have to wait until he really gets well. He needs seven days to recover. So after he loses that fever, you need to wait seven days, and only later, on the eighth day, it's almost like he was born anew, on the eighth day, you do the bris. Here as well, the Avinu Le Kol Shiva, what happened was, he recovered a week ago. Today, Arab Pesach, in the afternoon, his seven days are up. Between bringing and eating, the current Pesach, his seven days expired, and now he has a Chi of Bris Mila. Why don't you bring, bring him, uh, do the meal in the morning? You have a Chiv already in the morning. He wasn't potter at the point of Asiyah. You have to do the verse in the morning. But in the ace, oh, Chiddush is, this seven day wait needs to be full 24 hour cycles. Me'es le'es. So suppose he recovered seven days ago in the afternoon. So now, right now, at this moment, in the afternoon, his seven days are up. And now his Chi of Bris arrives. So you can have a Chi of Bris arriving between the Asiya and the Achil. Well, Tani Ludo, Ludo is the Shem Chacham Rashi says. He told us, Yom Havra Asay, day of recovery, Ki Yom Hivodoy, it's like his birthday. He, he equates the two things. Rashi says it means, in both cases, whether born or recovered from illness, you need to wait eight days. You need to do the bris on the eighth day. Past seven. My love, should we not assume that Udo meant to compare them completely? Just like when he was born. And you wait those seven days, and on the eighth you do the bris. You don't need 24 hour units. Kid could be born before Shkia today, and uh, six and a bit days later is already his eighth day. You don't need a full meis lace. Seven times around. Likewise, when it comes to the halacha, the seven-day waiting period after recovering from illness, you don't need full seven days. Loy, that's incorrect. There's actually an advantage. We're more concerned when it comes to recovery than a newborn baby. Because when it comes to counting from the day of his birth, you don't need seven full 24-hour periods. But when it comes to the seven day period after recovery, but in a you need seven full days, and those seven full days expired right now, Arab Pesach in the afternoon. Here we go. There was no Chiv Mila at the point of Asiyah Sakar Pesach. The Chiv only arrived later. And that's the case that the Pesach is speaking about. Rafa Palmer, I'll give you another case. Another case where the Chiv was not here at Chatzois at the time of the Asiyah, rather only later. The child has some sort of eye ailment. And he recovered between the Asiyah of the Pesach and the evening. In this case, it's not a, a serious illness. It's not a fever, which needs to wait seven days. It was just some sort of ailment, which postponed the bris. And right now, he's available. I'll give you another example. Parents were locked up in jail at the point of Asiyah Sakar and Pesach. And since it's their mitzvah, Nobody can just jump into it. It's actually a big shaila discussion. The place can, uh, how long we wait for parents. But perhaps we're speaking, this was the eighth day. And everybody was anticipating their release. So there's no bris until they come out. And they only came out later on, after the, uh, their shliach brought their carbon Pesach. So they had their asiyah done, with a chi of bris for the child. They're not available to do the bris. But later on, after the carbon Pesach was already brought, here they are to do the bris comes the Pasuk and says, make sure to look after your child before you eat your Karim Pesach. Rav Kana, Bredin, Rechem, Yomar. I'll give you another example. Gugan Tumtum Shenikra. This fellow who's a Vora Zachar and a Kebo were covered up. And then, it got uncovered at the point. At that period between the Asiyah of the Karim Pesach and the Achila, Er Pesach in the afternoon, Benim Tzachar, turns out that he's a Zachar, Beini Beini, meaning between the Asiya and the Achila. So this fellow was an unknown, gender unknown. He had no Chiv Bris Mila, right? Apparently, and Tysus points this out, apparently there's no Chiv to discover what he is, leave him as is, that's where Hashem made him. Unknown, no Chiv Bris. And it got uncovered, right now. 
after they, he brought the Karm Pesach, or his father brought the Karm Pesach, Pesach says, look, take care of him before the Achila. Rav Shravya Amar, I'll give you another example, pretty unique case. Kigoyin shehoitzi roishay chus leproiser. The newborn child stuck his head out of his mother's vaginal cavity. And Rashi brings the Gemara Nida, which considers this to be birth. Halachically, he's considered to have been born. But since his goof was still inside, he wasn't really roi, uh, practically, he couldn't do a bris mila. And when did he come out completely? Right now. Erev Pesach in the afternoon. And right now it's already time because it's already his eighth day since the initiation of birth eight days ago. So right now we proceed with Mila immediately. But he wasn't here yet. At the time of Asir, he was still inside. His head was out, but his goof was in. There was no Chiv at that point. Umi Chaye, can a child survive in this manner? We have a bride. Once a child leaves the mother's domain, the part of him which was meant to be closed, his mouth, etc., opens up. Part of him that was open, the navel, you know, the cord, all that, which was connecting him to his mother and provided him with his, provided him with his sustenance, closes up. It happens like that. Snap of the finger. Shel Mali came because otherwise. If things just stay the way they were, the way they were, he can't even survive for just one moment. By the way, that's what we say in Berchas Asher Yatzar, right? Shem Pasech Echad Mem or Yisosim Echad Mem. If Shalis Kayim with a Chayes Lefanecha, according to some Gerzah, Afilu Shah Echaz, based on this Gemara, right? It's a sudden, simultaneous switch over, switch the program, the moment of birth. So how can this newborn survive in this manner? In this state of limbo, half in, half out, my skin was speaking to the Zanse, he was sustained by Ishasa. There was a fever, a sickness there, which has the ability to sustain and provide for his needs, whether it's the, the, the warmth of the, the adrenaline, whatever it is, it's an alternate form of sustenance which kept him alive. Asks the Gemara, who was unwell? Ishasa the man. Whose sickness? Ilemi Ishasa the day, his fever, Ihachi. He was sick with fever, you have to wait another seven days. Call Shiva boy. He had fever until this point, which kept him alive. Now he's born, you have to wait another seven days. Because after a serious illness, you need a seven day wait period before the bris. There's no chiv right now. El Dazan say, what sustained him? Ishir saw the fever, the email of his mother. His mother was unwell, and that warmth somehow provided for his needs. Another terrorist of this kasha. How does he uh, have his sustenance at that point? When do we say that the child can't survive? That's only if he's not yelling. If he's yelling, that somehow generates heat and warmth and makes up, gives him an alternate form of sustenance. Tesis has a girsa instead of mi'avi, which means calling out and screaming, it means mu'ura. Mu'ura means he's still connected, his navel cord is still connected to his mother, and that sustains him. Okay, so bottom line is we had a Shaila to start off the Gemara, which was an Ural is only from eight days on, or an underage child, less than eight. Is he also considered, is he classified as an Ural pertaining to Issa Truma? We attempted to bring Garai, which didn't really work out. At the end of the day, we got sort of um, stuck with this, uh, with this um, you know, unusual description of events. Uh, the the Pasuk and the Bryces seem to allude to a case where a child not pose a concern at the point of Asiyah Sapesach, but suddenly after the Asiyah, he's here, he's a bris. How can that come about? We had a choice of cases. Actually, we had five possibilities where we have no Chiv at the point of Asiyah Sapesach, but only later on. The Pasuk is telling us, even in that case, you have to attend to the bris mila in advance of consuming that carbon Pesach. Om Rabbi Yechonu Meshim Rabbi Bino. You should know that even an Aurel Mekabal Hazor, Hazor that we're speaking about is the Azor's Meipora Aduma, which is sprinkled upon a, pre, a, a Tmei Mace. A fellow with a Tmei Mace happens to be an Aurel. Can you sprinkle the Meipora on him? Yes, we can. How do we know? Shekin Motsinim Avisenu. Take a look back at history. Our forefathers, who had just come out of the Midbar, went into Eretz Yisrael, 
שקיבלו הזוהר כשאין הרעילם. They were all tummy. Rashi explains they tended to their parents in the midbar, they buried them, and they became tummy to mazmeis. They needed hazoh as meichantos. And they were still in the arelus state. How do we know? How do we know? Maybe they had a bris. So the Gemara later will tell us that actually throughout all the years in the midbar, there was no bris mila performed. And even now, says the Gemara, it wasn't feasible to have the mila before the hazoh. So the Azor here was in advance of the Korban Pesach, but there was still a Reilam, Shunemar, the Pesach says, Va'om olam yardin. The nation came up from the Yardin, entered Eretz Yisrael, on what day? Ba'asor l'chodesh arishon, the 10th of Nisan. And the Korban Pesach was brought on 14. We know that Hazor, Smechatas, takes place on day 3 and 7. Right? Now, in order for them to bring the Karm Pesach, this was Yud Nisan, they have to bring it on Yud Dalad. They had to have had Hazo on that very day, not a day later, on that day, because otherwise Yud Dalad Nisan would not be day 7. We need four days between the Hazois, right? In order for them to complete the Hazo, on Yudal Nisan and go right away and bring the Karm Pesach, they had to have the first stage of Hazor four days prior, or say five days prior, on Yud Nisan. So Yud Nisan is like day three of the Tumma count. They have Yud Aleph, Yud Beit, Yud Gimel, Yud Dal. It's day seven. And at that point, they were still Arelim. Why? On that day, they could not have a bris. They were exhausted from that trip, not conducive to proper recovery. Koach nefesh. There was no meal on that day. If so, hazor emas avedu. When did they have the hazor? Lav kishen arelim. Apparently, they took it when they were arelim. Apparently, there's no contradiction. Who's to say they brought a carbon pesach that year? Like that, that you can't suggest that. The chesiv vayasos pesach. Pesach clearly says they brought the carbon pesach. That year. Maybe they brought the Pesach when they were in a Tumma state. Who says they even had the Azor? We have a clear Brysa to the contrary. Brysa says, They had Mila and Tvila, everything was great. Here comes a Chiddush. Although we know that Avram Avinu performed Bris Mila, in fact, the Gemara now said that. The concept of Mila was also applicable to Fnei Hadibar. It was there, but not all the way. Not the way we have it. There's an added element which came through Matan Ter. Lo nitna priyas Mila, Lavram Avinu. So although he removed the actual Arla skin, but not the extra membrane, which is flush with the flesh, that's called the, the, the Priya process, which un, uncovers the actual flesh by removing that membrane, by rolling it back. That was not given to Avram Avinu. Now Tresis points out, of course, Avram Avinu himself would do bris mila with the Priya. In fact, the Gemara and Yuma says he did everything. Even Erev Tavshilan, even Mrs. Tirabana. The Gemara just means to say it wasn't given to him as a mitzvah. Mila was, but not Priya. How do we know this? How do we know that it was added later? Shenemar Ba'isahi, Omar Hashem Yeshua. When they enter its Yisrael, Hashem tells you, Yeshua, take the sharp, you know, uh, cutting instrument. And the Pasa continues, and that's the main part of the riot. It says, moil es Yisrael Go ahead and do bris mila. And the Pasa uses the term, vishuv, repeat. Sort of, there's two parts to this process. Apparently, it's mila and priya. Vodil mahanach mol. Maybe it's the Iker Mila on those that didn't have a bris. The nation Adam at Shrim had bris. And the Pasa continues. All the Yidin in the Midbar didn't have bris Mila. Perhaps that was the instruction to just take care of their basic bris Mila. How do you know we're speaking about the two stage process of Mila and Priya? Imkain, if that were so, just a basic mila, my shuv. What does the pasuk say? Vishuv moil. Apparently, there are two stages here. Elav lepriyot, referring to the second stage as well. 
Oh my shame! Once we're dashing the words in the pasuk, why does the pasuk say "Veshuv Moilas Bnei Yisrael"? That we understand, but why does the pasuk conclude with the word "shameless"? To tell you that both stages are just as important as each other. La kushi seif mila tchilas mila. We connect. We equate the last stage, the priya, to the initial stage. Ma tchilas mila, just as the ikar mila, the removal of the earl of skin is ma keves, holds back the bris. It's critical. Af seif mila ma akvin. Likewise. The last portion, the priya as well, is critical. Ma'akven boy. This is not the pasuk says Elohein. Mission says Elohein tzitzin ma'akven samila, which are the skins which hold back the mila. Baser achayfes reivat Torah. Any sort of skin or membrane which covers most of the elevated flesh at the edge of the at the tip of the aver. Ve'ino echol betruma. If most of the Atar is covered, he's an Earl for all practical purposes. He can't have Truma. As we know, an Earl can't have Truma. Amar Avina, Vitemar Avriba Abba, Amar Ra. Bo Sarachayfe es roiv goiv hashal Atar. Although the Mishnah alludes to it as Bo which is covering most of the Atar, it isn't necessarily most of the circumference of the elevated flesh of the, of the Atar. Even if it's not mostly around, if the membrane is blocking just a little portion of that elevated flesh, it's roiv goiva, most of the elevation. At one point, at one point of the atara, at one point there's some flesh blocking most of its elevation. That is significant enough and impedes the bris. So bottom line, we've proven our point. Klai Yisrael in the Midbar were arelim. They came to Yisrael right away. They began preparing for the upcoming carbon Pesach. They started with a Hazor on day of arrival, despite the fact that they were Arelim. So we see an Earl and Hazor can go together. Ube Midbar, my time alay mol. Indeed, why? Did they not have bris in the Midbar? Ibo Yisema, one shot. Bisham Choshu de Orcha, they always constantly traveling, which was not conducive to a bris. Ibo Yisema, another shot. Bisham de Loi Noshev Lehu, Ruach Tzafoynes. They didn't merit, they did not experience that pleasant northerly, northerly wind, which enabled proper recovery, which enabled proper sunshine, and therefore was not conducive, was an unhealthy to experience bris milah, and they had to wait until they came to Eretz the Sanya, as we went to the Bryson. Shana, Shal Yisrova Midbar, throughout the 40 years in the Midbar, Loi Noshva, Lahem Rach Tzvanis, they didn't experience this pleasant breeze. My time of why? Iba Yisema, one shot, Misham Denezufim Havu, because they were distanced. From Hashem, Rashi says, because of the Masa Egel, they weren't roy to experience this pleasantness. Tosis disagrees. He says, Masa Egel, Hashem was already Michael. So, Lachti Kedvarech, rather, the Nazifa was an account of the incident with the Miraglim. So, either way, they did not experience this pleasantness, which enables Brismila, Vibayas Emer. Another reason why they didn't have the Ruch is blowing the Loi Nivdoir Anani Kaveh. Hashem didn't want to disperse the clouds of glory. So, they had no breezes or winds blowing their clouds around. And therefore, they were unable to do bris milah. Omer of Papa Hilkach, knowing this, knowing what? That you have to have uh, you know, the proper weather arrangements to facilitate bris milah and facilitate uh, you know, medical procedures. Yoyma de Iva. If it's a real cloudy day when you're not really experiencing proper sunlight, which helps on the recovery process. Yoyma de Shusa. Or on a day where you have the suddenly went blowing. On both of these types of days, we don't do brismila, nor do we let our blood because of the danger involved. But, says the Gemara, nowadays, nowadays, when people are just not really meticulous about these uh, factors, Shoymer Psoim Hashem, we apply the Pasuk in Tehillim, that Hashem guards over Psoim, Individuals who just proceed with unawareness, and likewise, we just do it hoping for the best. Tanara Baran, back on this topic of the Ruach Tzvainis, Kal Eisen Arbaim Shana, Shah Yisroba Midbar throughout the 40 years in the Midbar, Lo Yehoya Yaim, Shaloi Nashva Bura Ruach Tzvainis, Vachatsia Lai. Listen to this Chiddush. Even though they didn't experience Ruach Tzvainis throughout the day, but at one point, Chatsois Laila, a special time, Ace Ratsain, they had Ruach Tzvainis. They just had a little taste. Of Hashem's goodwill. We find that in the in Mitzrayim. 
right at Chatzois. Hashem initiated Makas Bechores, which was the final push out of Mitzrayim. My Talmud, what do you see from there? With respect to our discussion, how come Ashmolan we see from there? The Israots and Nusay. We see that Chatzois has significance. It is a special time of Rotson, a time where Hashem expresses His goodwill, and therefore, we say that even throughout the 40 years, why well, they didn't have Ruach Tzvainis on a regular basis, but at the point of Chatzois, which is a special Ace Rotson, they did. Let's go over to Rashi. About nine, ten lines from the top. Ace Rotson Milsi. The Cuban the Chatzois, the Laila Ace Rotson, the Makas Bacharis. We find that Chatzois was the Ace Rotson over there. Havenami Ace Rotson, the Ruach Tzvainis, likewise for Ruach Tzvainis. Veinach Ayoim, she Ruach Tzvainis. It says Rashi. Interesting thing. Every day we have this. At the point of Chatzois, you have a little bit of Ruach Tzvainis. In fact, David HaMelech used to make use of this Ruach Tzvainis. As the Gemara in Brachas, the Gemara in Beis tells us, He had a natural alarm clock. He had his harp suspended over his bed. When the cover of Kapit Safin and its openings were facing north, once Chatzoyis arrives, Ruach Tzvainis Ben Hashem's boy, that special wind would blow through the harp, and stop playing music on its own, and this would arouse him. He would get up and he would learn, he would daven. Continues Rashi. If it's a daily occurrence, why does the Pasuk focus on the 40 years? Loimlach to tell you that even Shafilu Oisan Memshon, even those forty years, Shinazu from Hayu, as we explained, they were distant from Hashem. They didn't necessarily experience Hashem's goodwill on a regular basis, but at night, yes. Veloy Noshul Lubi Yom, they didn't have it by day, but Noshul Bachatzois Lailo, they had it at night at Chatzois. Why Mishum? They is Ratzon with the time of Ratzon. So what do we have? We have an oral with Truma. No way. Rabbi Lezer learns through Xerah Shava. Rabbi Kiva learns from Ish Ish. What does Rabbi Kiva do with Rabbi Lezer's Teshav Asachar to include other individuals that are Asr and Achilas Pesach, Gerah Shemal Valei Taval, a fellow who is Noilat Keshu Mo. Their process isn't complete and they have to keep away from the carbon Pesach. Rabbi Lezer disagrees. He says you don't need a Pasuk for those, uh, for those fellows because the mol shalo, the ger shemol, he's a full ger. A child born with a mila is a full mila. What does Rabbi Lezer do with ish ish? Dibra teira kilashayin bnei adam. We had a shalom regarding a newborn, underage. Is he considered an earl or not? We did not really conclude, but we did have a discussion regarding the halacha that we find by Karb Pesach. You have to look after your children and you're after your avodim. Attend to their bris mila, and that enables you to a bring the Karm Pesach, and B, eat the Karm Pesach. How do you have the halacha of Mila by a child, which only pertains to Achila, but was not an issue when you brought the Karm Pesach? We have a total of five options. Either he was unwell, and his seven-day post-recovery period expire Erev Pesach in the afternoon, and now it's an issue. Or he has some sort of ailment, from which he recovered right now, or parents were locked in jail until this moment, or we have a tumtum who was discovered to have been a zakhar, and this discovery took place right before the achila, or in a case where the newborn was partially in, partially out, and he came out completely before the achila. We conclude that you can be mazad the efer paraduma even on the oral. How do we know this? From Avi Seinu, who did not have bris in the, in, the, in the midbar. Why? A, either because of their chush or the urcha, their travels, or because they didn't have the ruach tzvainis to help them. Why didn't they have ruach tzvainis? Either they would nizufim la mokim, or because it would disperse the nana covered in any case. There was no bris throughout the midbar. They come into Eretz Yisrael, right away on the first day, they have azoas, paraduma. Apparently, it's compatible, even with an ural. Until Matan Torah, there was only a mitzvah and a milah, Matan Torah introduced a new concept to the bris, not only the mila, but the priya, removal of that membrane as well. We concluded with Shemer Pesayim Hashem. 
All the best to you, and may we always have much aslocha and earn Hashem's shmirah.